Jonathan Marcus will joining me now is Democratic pollster Anna Greenberg and the Republican strategist and former advisor to John McCain, Taylor Griffin. Um, Anna Greenberg, first of all, why does it seem that Barack Obama's political antenna has been failing him recently? Well, I'm not sure that I would characterize it that way. I think that he's dealing with an incredibly tough problem, which is the economy. And while um, he's been actually quite successful in achieving a lot of his policy goals that he set out during the campaign, it is very hard to explain to the American people that things, bad things haven't happened, layoffs that haven't happened, or unemployment benefits getting extended. I mean, there are, there are various things that have happened over the last 20 months that have mitigated what could be even a worse recession, but it's very hard to communicate about that in a way that people who are really hurting um, can sort of understand right. or even sort of feel as real. If we set the economy to one side and look at the way his political antenna has been operating in terms of the Islamic Center, he wasn't sure-footed over that at all, wasn't he? And, and that has done him a lot of harm. Uh, I'm not sure that's the case. I think that if you look overall at his approval numbers, they're fairly stable, though clearly getting a little bit worse, and I'm not sure that you can attribute that to the mosque. I think that there's been a steady decline since, you know, the sort of historic high when he was inaugurated. But to, uh, just sticking with the, uh, the mosque issue, Taylor Griffin, um, the Republicans have sought to exploit that and embarrass uh, uh, President Obama. Isn't that a rather low way for politics to uh, be um, carried out? Well, I think this is an unforced error with the mosque issue. I think it's uh, emblematic of one of the mistakes that the president has been making uh, over, the, over the course of his administration, and that is really running the White House like a campaign. He tends to be very reactive and to jump into issues where the White House and the president really don't have a place. This is a case where it was a local issue and the president jumped into it. I think that's part of his problem. It's not the whole problem, but I think it is part of it. Would you accept that, uh, Anna Greenberg, that actually he still thinks he's running for office? Uh, no, but I would argue that he, as president, is very similar in temperament to how he was as a candidate, which is thoughtful, listening to multiple points of view, um, express, expressing sort of his principled belief about things. And I would argue that some of the things that have not been great politics, have been very consistent with his core values and with the way he makes decisions and yeah. the way he communicates. Yes, Taylor, he, he, he's an idealist, and you saw that presumably in the way that he pushed through the health care reforms. That was his ideal, and he executed it. Oh, well, that's correct. Um, this is something that the president believes in deeply, and, you know, he did get elected by a wide margin, and you can't blame him for taking up that issue. But I think if you put together health care uh, the big stimulus bill mm -hmm. and um, a number of other policies that people really viewed as putting more power in the hands of Washington and less power in their hands, you started to get a disconnect. I think the Obama administration came into office assuming that we had this big change and that now the country was ideologically left. I don't think that's right. I think it's still a center-right country and he's paying the consequences. And, the and Anna Greenberg, the natural disposition of Americans is not necessarily to believe that you can spend your way out of a recession. They're naturally more conservative personally than that. Well, I, the issue is, is not so much the government spending. It's that there's a perception, A, that Washington is broken, and B, part of uh, the problem is that the wrong people have benefited. And it's unfortunate that that has been the impression that voters have, because, in fact, things will be a lot worse if not for these policies. But how does he, why but has he failed to communicate that? Sorry to interrupt, but just, just to stick with this point, because it's so interesting. If that is the case, why has he failed to communicate that? Well, look, he's not doing this alone. He also is dependent on Congress. Financial services reform took forever to um, get passed. That would have been better had it from a communication standpoint, had that been passed earlier in his administration. But he is not in complete control of the agenda and what gets passed in what form. He deferred to Congress, rightly or wrongly, like on, on health care reform. It ended up being actually a very uh, unproductive in terms of public opinion yes. about health care process. It's not something he controlled necessarily. So he's not in, he, he has to, def he, not defer, but he has to deal with a Congress that isn't operating on his timeline or his, his um, in a way that necessarily has helped his communication strategy. Taylor Griffin, though, looking at the whole question of the stimulus package, $878 billion, and a lot of that money is not filtered through yet. You know, there may be some hope for him before the midterms if, you know, if grand projects start to get going. Well, I think we all hope that the uh, that the stimulus package works. It, it doesn't seem to have so far, and that the economy goes back. 
Look, no one, Republicans, Republicans included, like to see unemployment at nine and a half percent. Although there's certainly political, there's there's negative consequences for the president, political benefit for Republicans. But it, it seems very unlikely that we'd see any kind of substantial job growth that would really turn this thing around. And when you look at history, Anna can tell you this in the polling: it usually takes several months of sustained job growth before you really see that reflected in poll numbers. But we're also looking at they're all looking at the figures in the, on the midterms, for example, for Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan was in exactly the same position in the midterms instead of approval ratings, and he went on to win a second term. There's, I, you have to completely separate the midterms from the presidential. People make the decision differently than they do, they do um, and you don't know what's going to happen the next year and year and a half in terms of economic growth. I think that Taylor's right. It's, it seems unlikely that in the next two months um, that we're going to see a massive turnaround of the unemployment rate in a way that would impact the election. But again, I would argue that voters are pretty reasonable. They know this started under um, Bush. They know that a lot of the reasons why we have the deficit we have is because of policies under the Bush administration. And they'd expect miracles from, from President Obama or the Congress, I think what's unfortunate is that there's a perception that we voted for change, but Washington's still broken. It still operates the same way. That, to me, is the key issue that Democrats are facing more so than the economy itself. Thank you both very much.